Okay, so we've been working our way through some of the basics of navigating a file system, seeing what it's like to deal with absolute paths and relative paths, and taking a look at what is it like to deal with files and folders and kind of moving things around. A lot of the basic things we know how to do with the mouse, but trying to become more proficient with them uh, at the command line. Um, but uh, a, a next good evolution of something to take a look at would be understanding that many of our computers today, especially servers, they've got a variety of user accounts. So definitely getting into uh, systems that have multiple users, that, that's really what we have. And certainly from a competition perspective, that's what you want to be capable of maintaining. I want to be able to maintain when my environment has multiple users on it. So, all right, let, let's see how we can understand some of the user-related gotchas and important things and kind of go from there. So first thing I always like to emphasize is just uh, understanding who you are, right? Who are you logged onto this computer as? And if you remember in one of, the, one of the very first videos, I had emphasized that you had this little format here at your terminal that oftentimes shows you this is the user that you're logged in and you're at a particular computer. So you are a user at a computer. And it seems kind of trivial right now um, like hey James the information's right there in front of me and it's like yeah that's true um, but it's also good to understand like what happens when you start connecting to other servers okay what happens if I go from one device to another device to another device all across the network as you start pivoting through devices as we will in more complex tasks sometimes you can kind of lose track of who are you actually logged into this particular terminal as all right because who you might be logged into one terminal as versus another you know that can change so let's let's toss out some commands for this all right so the first obvious command that we definitely should take a look at is the who am I command who am I command will show you who you're currently acting as. So it's like, yeah, we're logged in as the sandbox user. That's good to know. And, uh, you know, obviously we logged into the computer using the sandbox user. And as I navigate to other devices, like I might know, I, I, it's possible I might no longer be the sandbox user. I could have another account on another virtual machine that that's who I'll have to assume some different identity. Keeping track of those identities oftentimes requires practice or pen and paper. Like on this virtual machine, I'm logged in as this user. On this virtual machine, I'm logged in as this user. Definitely some of the most effective students I've seen at the competitions. It's they're the ones who are taking notes and trying to organize things because there's just way too much information to try to remember off the top of your head. So nevertheless, though, we have the, the who am I command. Now, uh, one of the next things that I want us to kind of get into here is to see what is it like to start creating another user? All right, so I've got my sandbox user. As far as I can tell, they're the only one on my computer right now. And well, I want to I want to try making another. So let's let's use this just sort of as a platform. I know it's not part of the mini hack, but we'll just kind of keep our testing going and see what it's like. So there's two good commands to learn about in order to create users when you're working with uh, Linux. One is the add user command. The other is the user add command. And so a lot of people get these kind of confused. You, I'm hope, uh, you, you can obviously imagine why, you know, because they're so similar. But anyways, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate here the add user command. And the simple way that this command works is you will type add user space, and then, well, who's the user that you want to create? And so I'm going to create a silly little user. It obviously doesn't matter uh, who you create for if you're just practicing. I'm going to make Bob. All right, let's, let's make a simple user called Bob. Sure. So I'll say add user space Bob. And let's see what happens when we run this command. You see, it, it gives us a little notification and says, hey, only the root user may add a user or group to the system. It's like, okay, so what, what does that mean? It's like, well, all of the commands that we've been looking at thus far have not required any special privileges. They haven't had any restrictions about running them. It was just, well, my sandbox user could run the command. It's like, well, now we're getting into some commands that actually require elevated privileges. All right, and that's what they're telling us here. Only the root user. In other words, if you are not one of the top administrative users on the system, you do not have the authority to run this command. And so now we get to learn, right? What's the magic word to get what you want? And that, of course, is the sudo command. So sudo is something that we can add on to any of the commands that we've done thus far. Right? And what it does is it says, I'm going to do a super user do. In other words, I'm going to run a command, but I'm not going to run the command with the authority of my current user account. I'm going to run the command with the authority of the root user account. And what that oftentimes is similar to in Windows, it's kind of like right-clicking on something and saying, run as administrator. So don't run it with my privileges, run it with the administrative privileges. And then we'll take commands like the add user command, where my sandbox user doesn't have permission to run the, the add user command directly. It needs to inherit some privileges from a, from a higher level user, specifically from the root user. So we've got the sudo, all right? So we're adding sudo on to 
two in front uh, in front of our command to say we're going to run this command, but we're running it with elevated privileges. All right, so, and 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 the rest of the command is the same. So I'll do sudo add user Bob. And when you do this, it wants to verify, are you actually the sandbox user? So you have to type in your sandbox user password again to verify it's still you. And it's hiding the characters right now. So it doesn't look like it's typing, but it is. So I just typed password again, and it did go and successfully start creating the user. So we can see here one at a time, it's, say, it's saying, we're adding the user Bob, okay? We've now added a new group Bob, okay? We'll have to learn what the heck a group is. We're, we, we've apparently added this user Bob to the new group, Bob. Okay, wow, some, some things are happening. We've created a new home directory, slash home slash Bob. Okay, we're copying some files. All right, let's, let's see what this is all about. And it wants us now to set up a new password for the user that we just created, our new Bob user. And uh, obviously it doesn't matter what the password is. I'll just have it something really silly right now, like maybe like hello, one, two, three, something like that. Hello, one, two, three. Just coming up with a silly little password I can remember here for the next few seconds. And it's like, okay, great. We're telling you that the password was now successfully updated, changing some user information for Bob. Now, when you run this command as the add user command, many times it will prompt you for a lot of additional information. Um, as you can imagine, if this was like a new employee at a company, if you brought a new employee on, you might want to keep track of some of the account information, that, that like the real life human information that would uh, actually be associated with that particular user's account. So then we know who Bob was. Um, you can just leave all this stuff blank, though. It says here you can just press enter to kind of leave it all as the default. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of these. We're not giving Bob a, a, a full name or a room number, a work number, a home number. Yeah, we're not doing any of that. And then finally, we'll say why for yes all that information is correct. So that's what it looks like to go and to create a new user. So now I have actually two different users on the system. Let's see if we can start to confirm some of this information. All right, it said it created a home directory for Bob at slash home slash Bob. Well, let's look at slash home. We should be able to look at slash home right from here with an LS, right? We, we could do an LS of slash home and we'll be able to see it's like, yeah, there's a sandbox uh, folder and there's a Bob folder now. All right, what's inside it? All right, if I do an ls of slash home slash Bob, it's like, well, apparently nothing. So I guess the sandbox user that was set up when this computer was actually installed, they actually got things like a desktop and a documents and a downloads, all that fun stuff. Whereas the Bob user we created after the fact, well, they didn't inherently get all of that. Um, and so that's something, it's, it's not like there's a right or wrong. We just want to understand just what is the add user command actually creating for us or what is it not creating for us? What are some of the things the computer put there from the start? And what are some of the things that if you wanted them there, you might have to learn how to go back and add them in afterwards. So nevertheless, though, we, we now have a Bob user on the computer. Um, am I currently logged in as Bob? Well, how do you tell, right? We got our who am I? Who am I? It's like, well, no, I'm, I'm still logged in as the sandbox user. It still says here on my terminal that I'm sandbox. All right, so how, how can I switch users to now be a different user? It's like, well, I could log out of the GUI. I, I could come up here and I could say log off and say, well, now I'm going to log in as Bob with that new silly hello123 password I just created. Like, yeah, technically that would work. All right. But realize when you have a terminal, you can switch the user you're currently logged into right here in the terminal. And the command, of course, to do that is the su command to switch user. All right. So if I type su space and then the user that I'd like to switch to, SU over to Bob, this will now try to log in just in this one terminal, just in this one session to try to switch over to the Bob user. Let's give it a try. So I'll do SU space Bob. It's going to say, okay, what's Bob's password? You got to prove that you're, you can authenticate. So I'll do that. Hello, one, two, three. And it's like, great. Now, now, now I'm logged in as Bob. You see it changed. It changed to now Bob at sandbox, right? If I do a, who am I now? Who am I? And it says, Hey, you're now logged in as Bob. Uh, notice what else changed. Right? Notice how the file path changed. Now, now it actually says slash home slash sandbox slash desktop. Why does it say that? Why did it do that? Because before it just said tilde. It's like, well, when you're logged in as the sandbox user, slash home slash sandbox is the tilde location. But when you're logged in as Bob, that's not Bob's tilde location. That's not Bob's home. Bob's home is not slash home slash sandbox. We're right now we're in the sandbox user's home. All right. So again, not, not really a right or wrong, but we're just trying to notice who's logged in, where are they in the file system, what happens to the file paths as we go about doing this. Like That's what we're trying to understand here. Now, 
what I'd also like to really understand here and, and emphasize is that as soon as you start dealing with a computer or a server that has multiple users on it, one of the most critical things to understand right up front is the topic of permissions. Who has permission to do what with what? With what services, with what files, with what folders, with just everything. When you have multiple users, this is a critical thing from a security perspective. Who has permission to do what? Who has permission to go where? Who has permission to do changes, etc. All right.